gentlemen look like educated men of good taste, I have here some rare old first editions. Si le vieux vous embête. He's not bothering us. I'm interested in his books. Oh, yeah. Light beer. Oui, monsieur. Now, here are the complete works of Wilhelm Shakespeare, an old German writer. I like that. We move tonight. Orders from Berlin. Dr. Tobel is to be across the border before dawn. But we have had orders not to break into his house, and he hides there. Hasn't been outside in weeks. The Fuhrer wants no trouble with Switzerland at the moment. We must be very careful. If we can't break in, and he won't come out? When the Fuhrer needs something as badly as he needs the Tobel bomb site, there is always a way. Dr. Tobel is interested in my scientific volumes. You see my forged Swiss papers, and he believes I come from Luzern. No, gentlemen, the price is much too low. I could not possibly sell so rare a book for such a price. I will induce Dr. Tobel to come on a visit to my shop. As we pass the alleyway. You are interested in this book? A rare old set of Bismarck papers. One last warning. I've just had word from Berlin. The English fine hunter will try to take Dr. Tobel from under our very eyes. They are sending a stupid, bumbling amateur detective. His name is Holmes, or Holmes, or some such foolishness. You will never escape from Switzerland alive. Now, quick. Let me thrown out of here. And watch for my signal from Dr. Tobel's window. But, gentlemen, you promised to buy one of my books. I told you no. Uh, Stop bothering us. They are not so great. The price uh, left. Yes, yes. So this is the future. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 French, English. Oh, I hate those languages. Calm yourself, my dear Brown. In a short time, there will be only one language. Dr. Tobel, I have here some very interesting scientific books. I thought you might like to see them. Please come in. He's entering the house. Quickly, get the car and have the motor running. I will follow. Herr X will have the Tobel bomb site at the fuel while this Holmes is still having his tea. Um. What are you doing? I am sorry, but for months every move I have made has been watched. I am not a coward, Mr. Holmes. They won't watch you anymore. Tonight they intend to take you forcibly across the German border. Then why do we wait here, doing nothing, like rats in a trap? Calm yourself, my dear Dr. Tobel. We shall not only escape their trap, but we shall also take the cheese away with us. But, but how? The four sections of your bomb site fit inside these ponderous tomes. Although I must confess that I shy to the thought of disemboweling a complete set of Charles Dickens. Ah, oh, but you cannot hide me in a hollow book. My dear fellow, I am sorry that my good friend Dr. Watson isn't here to explain to you that my preparations are never slipshod. Stefan! Eric! Why do you call my servants? Your servants, yes, but tonight they assume new roles. Let me present Dr. Tobel and our old friend, the bookseller. Holmes, it is so simple. Yes, the obvious always appears simple. Quick now, we must leave. Stefan, the knapsack.
Stefan and Eric are proving excellent decoys. And the Gestapo has been fooled? Completely. Their servants are leading them into the next street. But what will happen to Stefan and Eric? Nothing, don't worry. I've taken care of that. The way is clear. Come on, quick. You would take the Nazis' own car. One must adapt oneself to the tools at hand. before we arrive in London. In a very few minutes. We're passing over Dover now. Thank you. Get used to our London blackouts, Dr. Tobel. Dr. Watson's. Very untidy fellow. What, what are we going to do with, with these? A problem of the most elementary nature, my dear Dr. Tobel. You are going to keep them here? I have always believed in the theory, originally projected by Edgar Allan Poe, the American writer, that the best place to hide anything is where everyone can see it. Yes, but uh, you will remember, no doubt, in Poe's story, The Purloined Letter. The missive in question was always in plain view. Hands up, gentlemen. Scotland Yard, quick. Mrs. Hudson. Oh, why, it's Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Holmes? Hello, Watson, old fellow. It's good to see you again. Telephone. Huh? Who do you want? Oh, yes, you're Scotland Yard. I'm afraid there's been a little mistake. Well, you didn't get angry. We all make mistakes at times. What? Well, if we didn't, you'd be out of a job. <laughs> Dr. Tobel. This is my friend and associate, and as you may have observed, my watchdog, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Dr. Tobel and I flew in from Zurich this evening. You can put that thing away now, Watson. Dr. Tobel, awarded the Massingham request for physics in 1939. My dear Watson, there is only one Dr. Tobel. Without Mr. Holmes, there would have been no Dr. Tobel, I am afraid. But I thought you were living in America, sir. I have been working in Switzerland for the past two years. And Holmes got you out? In the nick of time. There was not a point he overlooked. Every contingency was foreseen and provided for. It was magnificent. Thank you, Doctor. The problem was not without its interesting points. Is there anything you would like, Mr. Holmes? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. You can go to bed now. You gave me an awful fright dressed up like that. Well, good night, sir. He's quite right. You can't blame me for jumping to the conclusion that I did. He looked like a broken-down musician. Holmes, why didn't you take your fiddle with you? I never did think much of this dressing up business. It was necessary, I assure you. The Gestapo was close on our heels. Oh, really? This is Sherlock Holmes. I want to speak to Sir Reginald Bailey, please. Reginald Bailey? Is that the fellow who played Rugger for Blackheath? Yes, Watson. Oh. Hello, Sir Reginald. Holmes speaking. Yes, from Baker Street. I have Dr. Tobel with me. Oh, thank you. Very well, then. I'll meet you in half an hour. There must be no delay. I'll arrange with Sir Reginald to have the test tomorrow morning. I suggest that only cabinet ministers and your best aviation experts be present. Naturally. Watson, I leave Dr. Tobel in your care. Give him a sedative. This has been a strenuous business, and he has a long day ahead of him again tomorrow. Certainly, Holmes, of course. He shall sleep in my bedroom. I'll keep watch till you return. Thank you. It is not necessary to guard me. I am quite safe now. 
Safe, Dr. Tobel? I shouldn't count on it for a second. But, Mr. Holmes... A great deal may depend on your safety. And the enemy understands that just as well as we do. Good night. Keep alert, Watson. Yes, of course. A couple of these and you'll sleep peacefully through a blitz. Thank you. You better start undressing at once or you'll find yourself fast asleep in the middle of taking off your trousers. Well, I'll sit over here and keep an eye on things. Oh, by the way, if you're nervous, call out. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. Oh, funny. First thing, the same thing, the same time. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. <sighs> no, sir. I'm tidy full of homes. until he comes out. Holmes, I don't have to tell you how much this means to us. We shall know a great deal more about the bomb site after the demonstration, Sir Reginald. The war office have a pretty good idea of the value of the Tobel bomb site, just as the Nazis have. However, oh, if you'd care to place Dr. Tobel under the uh, protection of Scotland Yard until no, no, tomorrow... No, 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 that won't be necessary. I shall personally deliver Dr. Tobel to your representatives on Salisbury Plain in plenty of time for the demonstration. Thank you. Good night, Sir Reginald. Good night, Mr. Holmes. Since the blackout, those bodies have become quite a nuisance, sir. Oh. I say, you'd better come with me and have that fixed up. Oh, thank you. Just lean on my arm, that's it. It's impossible. He's sleeping in my bed. I've been here all the time. If anything's happened to him... Tobel! All right? Ah, uh, it is nothing. Here, sit down here. Let's have a look. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Who patched you up? The police doctor? Yes. He looks as if you've been attacked. Obviously, my dear Watson. Dr. Tobel, do you suspect the woman of arranging the trap? Woman? What woman? She's blonde, five foot six, full-lipped and very affectionate. Oh, really? You've known her for a long time. 
You were attacked after leaving her apartment. Holmes, how do you know this? the Americans call doodling? It is more serious than you could possibly realize, Charlotte. Good. More coffee? No, thank you, darling. I must get back before they miss me. We've been separated for so long. I couldn't bear it if anything should part us again. I want to work with you, and I want to know every minute where you are. Even for you to know the details of my mission in London is to sign your death warrant. If you are in real danger, I want to share it. There is one thing you can do. Guard this envelope. If anything happens to me, see that it reaches the hands of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes. I pray I never have to deliver it. No. You, uh... Held her close before departing. Still at home? It's all there for the trained eye to read, Watson. But look here, why couldn't he have been attacked on his way to the woman's apartment? The mark of a blow has erased some of the powder. Obviously, if the attack came first, the powder would have remained undisturbed. And the four lips? That was a guess. I never guess, Watson. You have rubbed the lipstick from your face with the handkerchief you now hold in your hand. And that amount of lipstick never came from a pair of thin lips. And the blonde hair? Gracious way. Mr. Holmes, I am glad you are on my side. Well, in that case, you will desist from disobeying my orders and slipping out while your bodyguard sleeps his watch away. It won't happen again, Holmes. I was sitting in front of the fire. All right, Holmes, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, can you describe your assailant? I never saw him. A great figure came at me in the dark. I felt a stunning blow on my head and, and instantly fingers were at my throat. But you must have noticed something about him. Think, man. A thing of little consequence to you may mean a great deal to me. Wait. Wait a moment. There was one thing. Long fingers at my throat like... like steel. And then... then a, an odor. A heavy, drug-like odor. A drug? Opium? That is it. I am sure of it now. Well, I suggest we get the remains of a good night's sleep. Remember, the test takes place tomorrow morning on Salisbury Plain. <laughs> 